uh, hi everyone and uh, welcome back so in previous couple of videos we discussed about this particular architecture where we did a serverless offline DynamoDB offline I mean we installed DynamoDB locally and we were able to do the CRUD operation okay with basic setup now consider that we also want to do the integration with other services with Lambda right because this is the API gateway which is a HTTP trigger right it will execute the lambda now this lambda can have an integration with sqs sns s3 i mean anything you just name it uh, this can be sqs i mean it is just posting one asynchronous message to sqs or sending something to sns topic so now we will talk about these integration point or you may have some different database it's not like every time you will get the dynamo db uh, I don't want to use DynamoDB, I want to use MongoDB, right? And MongoDB, your database can be external. Let's say here I have MongoDB or MySQL or something else. I mean, MySQL is, if you want to use it, we can just go ahead and just connect to the MySQL instance. And what are the differences here? Right, we can also connect to MySQL, same as we are connecting with any other database but for DynamoDB, DynamoDB is AWS managed service right and uh, so we can actually do the DynamoDB client and then DynamoDB.client.scan.put uh, update delete all these queries you can directly trigger what if you have like a Mongo Mongo is a database okay and it's not on AWS and you wanted to consume it then first of all how your lambda should look like in terms of code because we are going to talk to a mongodb for each and every call which we are making right or it can be a mysql i mean in in case of these mysql or any other rdbms you can also use some kind of a orm with your language like i'm using node.js so i can use a kind of orm to talk to this mysql instance that i can write in the lambda only let's first talk about this mongodb instance like we have a mongodb right and lambdas are like event driven lambda is not something which keeps running maintaining the mongodb connection and whenever the request is coming it already has the connection and it will send you no it doesn't have a mongodb connection so for each and every request you need to first get the connection and then do the query and get the data and send it to the client same with any other thing because lambda is like event driven it's not running every time it's like on demand you send a request from the api gateway for the particular http mapping if lambda is mapped it will invoke it will actually create the process and then it will connect to the database and get the data based on your request parameter path parameter and some data right so first let's talk about this mongodb integration with the lambda it can be as simple as you have a simple uh, mongodb maybe x outside of aws and you want your lambdas to talk to mongodb okay so what we can do here is let me just uh, see that okay so let me set up this so what we will do is we will use the same kind of uh, lambda template which we were using earlier the only difference is here instead of uh, dynamodb in our handlers we will be talking to uh, mongodb that is the difference so here we will have a mongodb so in mongodb first we will talk about the models like how we are going to create the models and then we will write our handler okay yeah so this is our basic setup and these are the handlers we are going to create okay simply like create user i don't want to, to keep these things complex because for just demo or poc we can just get started with the basic crud right so create user handler is handler dot create user and, and the events are http this is the http path request is post http path user id and request is put right so let, let's do this let's write this in the handler handler has a multiple function so we are going to write only single file handler dot js and we will add all these things Okay, in the handler.js, we will require few things. The important things we are going to do is 
first of all how to connect mongodb with node.js i will not explain more on that because we can just use uh, mongoose mongoose we can install as npm module and we can work with that so how we're doing it const mongoose equal to require once we get this module what other things is we can convert this mongoose to the promise so const promise or we can write async await code also promise equal to require a bluebird which can be a library it actually helps to convert the callback based library into the promise based okay and we are dealing with the user entity right so and we are talking about mongodb so here we have to create model inside model we will create a user.js this is our mongodb model we have created inside that we can just define the model definition const model equal to mongoose dot model and here we define the whole object so mongoose dot model i'm talking about user and all the attributes of this like name i have name will have these many properties let me first do npm install so we can get all these dependencies clear so we have mongoose bluebird and validator validator is just doing the validation of uh, our query parameter our payload and all okay we are in the correct folder i did npm install it will install these dependencies now inside our model here is our model we can define the types okay what all we are going to have the name is the attribute so type for name is a string if you already work with mongodb and node.js then it is very easy for you required required let's say true and validator so here i will write a validate function for the name what i need to do is I am writing validate function. I'm taking name as an argument, and I will just say I, I'm going to use this custom validator which I have imported. Const validator equal to require validator, and here I can do validator dot validate. Validator dot like is alphanumeric or something like that. Do we have method like this? So I did npm install. So there is a method is alpha is alphanumeric because we are allowing name only should be string and type alphanumeric. Then after name we have first name. So these kind of validations we can add first name and this is what we can add for the first name the type required property validate and then we can have the date types and all we just need to use these methods validator dot validate all these properties okay so this is the mongoose model we have created let me just see we are closing everything properly names should be closed here this is a name property then we have first name okay now everything is correct and we are actually exporting it module.exports model okay we are exporting this model and we can also get the mongoose mongoose equal to require mongoose i'm just it's like a repetition of code we can just get rid of it okay we got the model now we have the handler now rest all code is all about connecting to the mongodb and responding to the request so to convert a mongoose to the promise based mongoose dot promise equal to promise which we have imported it is capital p yes now we can use promises okay so what we need to do here we are going to write a handler functions 
right so like uh, if you wanted to create a user module dot exports dot user this is a handler function and every handler function will take the same set of argument event context and callback and what we are doing here is creating the user so for creating the user or any kind of operation right we will always be validating the payload right so here first let's call it as a create user and here const data we are getting this data from the event object so we can just do json.pass event.body okay now we can actually create the object of a model user which we just created and here we'll pass the properties this is how we actually create the record in mongodb user model from require and here we'll pass our model we have user model okay so what we are doing is we are passing the first name first of all i think we have a name which we can get from data dot name we are going to get this in the payload first name is data dot first name let's say we have only two things now we can actually validate the user uh, in validation what we are doing is we can just check okay everything is fine all the validation criteria is getting match or not user dot validate async and because we already have put the validation criteria here validate method right so here instead of this we can do is if user dot validate sync this is a method if it returns true that means something is wrong right we haven't provided uh, the message properly right so what we can do is we can actually return the status code and some message we can return so status code can be here i mean I, we can create a function or we can return something from here status code is 400 and just putting a message for now we need to return body and headers body i will say is uh, incorrect payload data I mean you can customize it you can write a call a function and do all these things there and then now uh, the, the point I was talking here we don't have a MongoDB connection this is not a server based thing right so we have to get the connection first and then we have to execute it so I will do is db connect this is a function I have db connect and db connect and execute this is the function what it will do is it will take the the URI where we wanted to connect if everything is fine db connect and execute this is the function it will take a URI and a callback okay this we will write what this function will do is it is taking URI and a callback and here return uh, db dot then so what we need to do is we can write a function or mongoose dot connect db uri and then what is this user use mongo client there is an attribute we can pass that is true okay let me just see because this connect is not a from okay this is a promise based so we can wrap this thing whole in a promise let me just see what this connect will do is open the default mongoose connection otherwise it will reject it right so we, if it is rejecting means mongoose.connect is returning a promise okay so what we can do is we can write this as a sync and then return await okay. 
what is wrong with this a sync function okay so db connect this is not type annotation okay db connect is taking two argument uri and options options are the object sorry for that so here we are returning a promise right if any exception happens let's see i mean not the right way or correct way of doing it like this i will not return it if await is not throwing any exception that means the connection is fine otherwise we have to return a callback it's saying there is an error and this is a null if everything is fine then we can actually return a callback with null okay null and null okay i mean just a wrapper of callback inside this we are resolving it with it with the async of it okay so db connect and execute i can call this method now db connect and execute i will be passing a uri so i will be getting it from the process db uri and this is my callback if everything is fine in this callback i can ex ex I accept two argument one is an error and another is a data right if error is null we can accept only one argument that should be fine what we are saying is if the error is null it means we got connection right so here we are saying is if error is there then treat it differently we will do the return blah blah and we will just do the same thing db.execute we will return it like this let's see now if we didn't get any error then we can do is we can actually use user object and then user.save.then this is returning a promise user save is a function dot then and here we can return a callback once it is done callback null with the response 200 this is our final body means you will get something it has been created successfully so you will get the id user dot id once the user is created Otherwise, if this promise is again failed, I mean, it's all about the JavaScript try catch game. Then you will return the callback with error, with some error code which we are getting. So here we are getting error. This can be a null, and here you will pass the status code 500, some custom message, error record, or something, error dot message okay but this is how it is going to look like right my whole objective is to talk about like how to deal when you have a mongodb here you need to manage the connection here you have to write the lambda like this create user now same kind of lambda can be replicated for the get user right here instead of create user you will do a get user you will get the id request dot path params dot id right request dot path params dot id and you will do the same kind of operation dv dot execute dot then so this is a sync function we are calling and process if everything is fine okay i mean this is just a way we can also write it differently this you can return a promise then you do a dot then all these things can happen okay so this is a just a typical way of writing a mongodb with lambda i mean we are writing to the mongodb tables it can be as complex as you can think of the only thing is we are just we have to track the mongodb connections if everything is fine just do our operations and get rid of it okay uh, thanks everyone this these code and these templates are already available if you want to have a look just look at the github repository okay uh, thanks everyone